Hey everyone, welcome to Plastics in Practice. This is where we cut through the dogma and get straight to the evidence. Today, we're zeroing in on two huge questions that come up all the time in hand trauma. First, you've got a mangled digit. How do you know for sure if it's ischemic? And second, you just finished a 10-hour replant. Does that patient actually need a heparin drip? Let's see what the data says. So, let's set the scene for this first one. You know the call. It's 2 a.m., a mangled hand rolls into the ER, and it's just a mess of swelling and blood. You're trying to check cap refill, but is that real? Or is that just some venous congestion fooling you? Relying on these subjective signs in a chaotic trauma setting, it can be really, really tough. What we need is a hard number, something objective. And then there's the second big dilemma. You are wiped out after a marathon replantation. It's done, it looks good, but now you have to make a call on post-op anticoagulation. And it feels like everyone has their own special recipe, right? Their own protocol they swear by. But what's the actual evidence for routine heparin? Is it really helping us? Or are we just adding bleeding risk for no good reason? Okay, so to tackle that first question, let's look at a paper by Tarabudkar and his team. They decided to investigate a tool that's literally in every single ER, probably clipped to the IV pole right next to you, the good old pulse oximeter. The idea was simple, but brilliant. Can this little device give us the reliable, objective data we need to cut through all that guesswork? And what they found was just crystal clear. I mean, look at this. There's a massive, statistically significant gap between digits that were perfectly fine and those that had a critical vascular injury. The viable, well-perfused digits, they had an average O2 sat of 98%. The ischemic ones that needed an urgent repair, they were way down at 76%. That is not a subtle finding. That's a huge difference you can act on. So here's the first magic number, and this is your all-clear signal. The study showed that if you get a pulse ox reading of 95% or higher on that digit, it has a 100% negative predictive value. So what does that mean in the real world? It means you can be incredibly confident that there isn't a major arterial injury that needs a repair. It lets you breathe a little easier. Now on the flip side, here's your big red flag. Any digit that had a pulse oximetry value of 84% or lower, well that had a 100% positive predictive value. Think about that. Every single one of those digits was found to have a vascular injury that required a trip to the OR. This is your definitive signal that it's time to intervene. You know, the authors really summed it up perfectly. They said, no digit with a pulse oximetry value of at least 95% had an ischemic injury. It's just so powerful. This simple, non-invasive test gives you so much confidence right there at the bedside during that initial triage. It helps you make faster, better decisions. All right. Let's pivot to our second question. And this is a great example of how solid evidence can really challenge something we've been doing for years. To get to the bottom of the heparin issue, we're going to look at a 2019 prospective randomized controlled trial by Nishijima and colleagues. They directly compared what happens after digital replantation with and without heparin. And the main finding was, well, it was a bit of a shocker. When they looked at the big picture, the overall success rate of the replants, there was absolutely no difference. The success rate was 84% in the groups that got IV heparin, and it was 84% in the group that got no heparin at all. So your first thought is, wow, okay, I guess heparin does nothing. But hang on, because that is not the whole story. You see, the real practice-changing pearl, the thing you really need to know from this study, wasn't in that main result. It was actually buried in the subgroup analysis. The researchers were smart, and they decided to break down the results by patient age. And what they found here, it totally changes the game for post-op heparin. Just look at this data. For patients who were younger than 50, the odds ratio for success with heparin was 0.22. That means heparin wasn't helping them at all. But for patients who were 50 or older, the odds ratio shot up to 5.40. Let me say that again. Giving heparin increased the odds of a successful replant by more than five times in this older group. That's a massive, clinically meaningful effect. So what do you do with this information? Well, it gives us a really simple evidence-based algorithm. Step one, check the patient's age. It's that simple. If they are under 50 years old, this level two evidence tells us routine heparin isn't necessary. But if they are 50 or older, you should absolutely consider it. And the study found that a low-dose protocol of just 10,000 units a day was effective, which avoids a lot of the risks of those higher-dose regimens. 
All right, let's wrap this up and boil it all down to the two high yield pearls from this explainer. These are the things you can literally start doing differently on your next call. And they're definitely things you'll wanna have in your back pocket for your board exams. Okay, here they are. First, for triage, use a pulse oximeter. It's your new best friend. If that reading is 95% or higher, you can feel confident that the digit is safe. If it's 84% or lower, that's a critical finding and it's time to go to the OR. Second, for your post-op replants, stop giving routine heparin to everybody. Instead, reserve it for your patients who are 50 and older. That's where the evidence shows it makes a real difference. So there you have it. Two studies that give us really clear, actionable data to help us take better care of our patients. And it's a great reminder to always be questioning what we do and why we do it. Which leads to a final question for you. Which piece of your own clinical dogma, which that's just how we've always done it thing, will you challenge with evidence next? Thanks for tuning in.